Praise God. Well, this morning I want to continue in our series or in our uh, two-parter, Word for the Wounded. Today is part two. So just to recap just really briefly, the soul is broken up into three parts, the mind, will, and emotions. Your soul is the seat of your mind, will, and emotions. Our humanity has a body, spirit, and soul. It's a triune body. So is your soul. Your soul is triune, mind, will, and emotion. As we go through life, we will at times experience physical wounds. It's a given. You can be the most conservative. You can avoid certain things. But nonetheless, we're going to get uh, physically scrapes, bruises, cuts. I mean, that's, that's, that's the norm. You know, that's the reality. But did you know that your soul can also experience cuts and bruises? And uh, when we get physically wounded, we know where to go. We go to the doctor, right? We get healed. We don't tolerate physical wounds. But where do we go when our soul is wounded? And that's what I want to talk to us today because there is a lot of folks that are walking wounded, not physically, but their soul is wounded. Some of us don't realize that we are walking wounded. We see the effects of that wound, but we don't realize that it is a wound that maybe happened in the past that has been unhealed. See, it's not the wound that kills us. It is the unhealed wounds. These unhealed wounds of the past can affect our today and our tomorrow. And so I want to talk to us about those wounds. See, physical wounds causes pain. But so does soul wounds. And these soul wounds can cause pain. Sometimes we don't even realize because the, something happened in, to us in the past, it caused an internal wound, a, a soul wound, and we experience the immediate pain. But over a period of time, uh, the pain seems to subside, but nonetheless, that wound has not been healed. And so oftentimes, when something happens in our today that reminds us of that wound, it reminds us of the pain. And that pain can cause us to adjust our life. It can cause us to do, uh, make stupid decisions or unwise decisions. And so today I want to talk to us about those soul wounds. Some soul wounds are superficial, but some soul wounds can run deep. But the good news is that we serve a God that heals. He doesn't just heal physically. He can heal your soul. He can heal you, your spirit. He can heal your emotions. Some folks have struggled with emotional wounds, mind wounds, will wounds. And all of that can be healed because we serve a God that heals. He healed yesterday. He heals today. And he can heal tomorrow. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The good news is that we serve a God that can heal. In fact, that's what he does. And that's who he is. His name is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. And that's your first bullet point. Now, the thing is, just because we are healed physically, that does not mean that we are uh, healed in our soul. One time I went to, uh, as a young boy, I went uh, fishing with my dad, and he took me on the reef, and uh, I walked on the reef, and uh, I stepped on Vana. Yeah, it's that black porcupine looking thing it's a sea urchin and I stepped on it and it caused me physical pain to a place where a couple of years I haven't I didn't go to the beach for a couple of years to walk in the water. why because something happened to my soul I was wounded in the soul fear came into my soul and it caused me to not go to the beach not walk in the water but I was healed physically after two years that vana puncture was healed i was healed physically but not in my soul and that's what can happen to us maybe some of us you you know you, you came here and you you're wounded because you've been rejected you've been abandoned maybe you've gone through a divorce a divorce can cause an internal wound maybe you were betrayed by someone you love, that can cause an internal wound, a wound to the soul. Bankruptcy can cause a wound to the soul. Maybe it's your fault, no fault, doesn't matter. Your soul is wounded. But the promises of God is this. It's in your notes. 
God says in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. That's God's promise to us. He can heal us physically and he can heal our internal wounds, the wounds to our soul. And the good news is that your internal wounds are not eternal wounds. Your internal wounds are not eternal wounds. God can heal your internal wounds. Amen? Amen. Now, as a kid, when I get cut on a finger or I scrape my knee, I would often run to my, to my mom. My mom would come and she would say, hey, Ken, uh, I need to wash out this cut because I don't want it to get infected and I don't want it to spread. And that's just like God. He needs to make sure that he tends to that wound because he doesn't want that wound, uh, that internal wound, the wound to our soul to get infected and to spread. Some of us, we don't realize, but because we've tolerated a wound, that that infection to the wound has spread into our present, into our recurrent relationships. It has spread to a place where we are not making wise decisions. We're hesitant. We're avoiding things. And God wants to address that. He wants us to get healed of our, all of our wounds. In fact, when my mom, after she washed it, she would put hydrogen peroxide on it. That wasn't worth, it, worth enough. And sometimes God causes pain before he heals. Does it make sense? But the pain is prior to the healing. And so sometimes God, had, like, a, like a doctor, he is the great physician. That's why his name is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. See, I really believe that we, went, we, we know where to go. We go to the doctor to get physical healing. But where do we go for soul healing? And God sometimes has to put spiritual hydrogen peroxide on our wounds. Amen? So when you're wounded, here's what you do. When your soul gets hurt, go to Jesus immediately. Go to Jesus immediately. And number one, let Jesus wash you immediately. Why? So that your wound doesn't get infected and spread. When I was a non-Christian, before I came to the Lord, I experienced many times when my heart was broken. Spiritually. You have a broken heart, right? And you know the place that I went? I went to the bar. Yeah, where do broken hearts go? Go to the bar. Why? Because I didn't know where else to go. Where do you, I know where to go to, uh, to, to mend a broken bone. But where do you go for a broken heart? And the typical place is to the bar. And hopefully I get ministered by the Spirit. Isn't that what, what alcohol is called? Spirits? But it's the wrong kind of spirit. And it's interesting because I had a favorite bar that I used to go to, and the bartender knew me. I knew the bartender. And every time I come to the bar, he would look at me, and he would say, so what's your poison today? <laughs> Isn't it interesting that here I am wanting to get my heart mended. I go to a place to get spiritual stuff, right? And here I'm drinking poison. And that's what we tend to do. We tend to go to the bar church, <laughs> get ministered to the bartender pastor, <laughs> thinking that we'll get a spirit and thinking that we'll get mended. But how many of us know that that worldly spirit only numbs the pain but doesn't heal the wound? And that's why so many folks, when they have a broken heart, when their soul is wounded, they go to all the wrong places. They go to the marijuana shop. We go to the bars, we go to pills, but all of these things only numb the pain. All of these things are coping mechanisms just to numb the pain, but never heals the wound. And that's why when all these things wear off, you still feel the pain. Why is that? Because the wound has been unhealed. So God doesn't want us just to numb the pain. No, he, he wants to address the wound. He wants to completely heal those wounds. That's why in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, Scripture says, to make her holy, talking about the church, talking about us, cleansing her by the washing of water through the word. 
Do you know that the word washes? The word washes. The word of God will wash your wounds to clean it out. To get so that it doesn't get infected, so that it doesn't spread into your current relationship, your, your marriage, into your future. Yeah. He wants to address it, but he has to first clean it out. He washes it to the, to the word of God. Yeah. Where do we go when we're broken heart? Where do we go when we're wounded? To, the God, to God's word. Yeah. To God's word. I was watching TV and a commercial came out about... Uh, the wounded soldier. I'm, I'm sure many of us saw those commercials about the wounded soldier. And it dawned on me that, you know, some of these soldiers have been physically wounded. They've been physically disabled by a wound that they experienced in war. Some of these soldiers come out of the front lines of war and they, came, they come out with, with this thing called PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And God just revealed that because we are Christians, because we have Christ in our life, we are now soldiers of Christ thrust into the front lines of spiritual battle. And some of us, we come out of these battles with wounds. We're like spiritual wounded soldiers. And when we come out of this battle, we don't come out with PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. We come out with post-traumatic soul disorder. Our soul has been wounded. And many of these wounded soldiers physically also come out with PTSD, post-traumatic soul disorder. Something has happened on the inside that has wounded their soul. And that's why sometimes when they experience something in the present, it reminds them of something in the past, a pain in the past, and that disables them from walking into a greater future. And that's just like us. Some of us have incurred or experienced a hurt in the past that has opened up a wound in our soul. And we are now experiencing post-traumatic soul disorder, which has disabled us, disabled us to a place where it's affecting our marriage, affecting our career, affecting us somehow. And God is saying, you know, I, I'm a God that heals. I didn't just give you a coping mechanism. No, I gave you a conquering mechanism. Do you know that God never calls us to cope with wounds, but to conquer it? Amen. He wants us to conquer those wounds. Why? Because he has a future and a hope for us. He never wants us to be uh, wounded soldiers or walking through life wounded. There's a lot of folks that are walking wounded right now, and they don't realize it. So how, do, how can we... Uh, apply, apply God's healing process in a, on a practical level. Well, in your bullet point, would you write personalized healing scriptures? If the word washes, then we need to learn to personalize healing scriptures. There's a lot of scriptures in God's word that talks about healing, but personalize it. For example, God, you said you will restore me or restore me to health and heal my wounds. Yeah. Heal my wounds, my health, Jeremiah 30, 17. Or Jesus, you said you came to heal my broken hearts and to set me free. See, God doesn't want you to be in bondage to your wounds of your past, to the pains and the hurts of the past. No, God wants to set you free. How will he set you free? By healing your wounds, yeah. healing your broken heart. There's a, there's a scene in the Bible where Jesus is going to do something really cool with his disciples. And, we, and, and you, we can read it. He came to Simon Peter, meaning Jesus, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Underline that, unless I wash you. You have no part with me. Isn't it so true? When a person is clean, he doesn't want to stand, stay close to someone who's dirty. And Jesus is saying this, Peter, unless I wash your wound, unless I wash the dirty part of you, because the feet was kind of dirty, you walked in places, you walked in stuff, and let's say you have a wound that is dirty, I have to wash you. I have to, I need to wash you or else you have no part in me. See, what happens with 
unwashed wounds is that it prevents you from having any part with Jesus. In other words, Jesus might have abundance for you, breakthrough for you, a breakout season for you. He might have a new level blessing. He might have abundance for you. But you're not going to be able to experience because of this unhealed wound. It's these unhealed wounds that's preventing you from having a healthy relationship with your spouse, healthy relationship with your kids, healthy relationships in your career, in your, in your ministry, in your call, in your dreams. See, God has all this for you, but you will not have any part of that if he first doesn't wash you and heal you. Because if what happens is when you have an infection, it starts to spread into your future relationships, into your future call, into your future dreams. And what happens is what started off good starts to now get bad. Why? Because of an internal unhealed wound that was not washed. Are you guys catching this? That's why God says, I need to, I need to wash you, Peter, or else you're not going to have any part with me. The second is deposit right treasures into your heart. Deposit right treasures into your heart. Psalms 119.11, your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Not somebody else's word. Not the words of somebody who offended you. No, your word have I treasured in my heart. Don't deposit negative events, negative words that other people speak to you, speak about you. No, you have a choice of what treasure you deposit in your heart. You need to start depositing God's word in your heart. Deposit good stuff, positive things into your heart, positive memories into your heart. Because if you, listen, if you deposit junk, you're going to withdraw junk. It's just like your bank. You go to make a deposit. What you deposit, you will withdraw. That's why the scripture says, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the heart, you shall live. If a heart is filled with negative things, hurtful things, offenses, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment, then if you deposit all that in your heart, guess what? You will withdraw out of that. You see, that's why God says, no, you need to deposit positive things, uplifting, inspiring things, my word, so that when you do get wounded, the Holy Spirit can reach into your soul and pull out healing words. Are you guys getting this? So you have control. You have the authority of what you deposit in your heart. In Colossians 3.16, Scripture says, let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom. Not poorly, but richly. In other words, he wants his word, the Bible, healing scriptures, scriptures that give life, scriptures that give encouragement to be treasured richly inside of you. When you're rich, you have an abundance. In other words, have an abundance of his word inside of you. Not poor, no, rich. So that why? So that you can be healed from the inside out. Deposit right treasures into your heart. Next is number three, choose where your mind dwells. Choose where your mind dwells. You know, it's funny because when we look around to buy a house for ourselves, we go to so many places looking for the not only the right house, but the right place. Why? Because we know in real estate it's always location, location, location. So we want to pick a location to where we buy a house so that we can live in that location. Similarly, you have a choice of where your mind dwells. You need to pick a good real estate location where you're going to park and live out of your mind. (laughs) Does it make sense? Some of us, we're, we're dwelling, our mind is dwelling in the ghetto. Yeah, God, is, God has prepared a spiritual Summerlin, a spiritual Beverly Hills, a spiritual Rodale, a kingdom. And yet we're choosing to allow our minds to dwell in the ghetto. Are you guys getting this? Right? Because the surrounding, what makes, it, it's, what, what makes the property value of your house increase is the surrounding community. What makes 
the value of your mind increase is the surrounding community yeah. in your mind. That's why I want to encourage you that God has better real estate for your mind. Don't allow your mind to dwell in negativity. Don't allow your mind to dwell in offenses, in bitterness, in resentment, in anger, in revenge, in all of these other stuff. No, you're, you, know, you choose where your mind dwells. Well, where is that? Well, God tells us where our mind should dwell. In Philippians, the Filipino book, 4.8. Uh, scripture says, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worth of praise, dwell on these things. Underline that. Dwell on these things. Don't dwell on the person who hurt you. Don't dwell on that event that wounded you. No, let your mind dwell on what is honorable, what is right, what is pure, what is lovely. See, the word dwell is like you're going to live there. Don't live in your wound and out of your wound. You're, when you dwell on stuff, it's like you're, what you're doing is you're, you are replaying the hurt in your mind. You are rehearsing that painful event in your mind you got to change the tape of your mind stop rehearsing stop replaying and stop nursing the past wounds too many folks are nursing their past wounds the problem with that is when you nurse something you feed it when you feed something it gets stronger so when you nurse your past wounds what you're doing is you're making your wounds even worse. You're making your wounds even stronger. The way to, to heal the wound is to starve it. When you starve your body, you get weaker physically. The way to, to weaken the wound, the pain, is to starve it. Don't keep feeding it. You get offended uh, a year ago and you're in the present today. Stop feeding into it. What happens is you start to replay that offense in your mind, rehearse it in your mind. And guess what? The enemy picks up on that and he makes it even worse than it really was. Does it make sense? Yeah. This is the enemy's ploy from keeping you here away from God's best for you, away from God's best relationship in your marriage. No, don't fall into the enemy's trap. Don't re replay, replay uh, and rehearse those things. And along that line of choosing treasures to deposit in your heart, the right treasures, is this. Choose what you keep in your mind. Choose what you keep in your mind. Do you know that you can choose what to forget and what to remember? That's right. You can choose what you forget and what you remember. I tell my, my son, clean up your room. <laughs> it doesn't get done. Oh, I forgot. I tell my son, hey, um, can you, uh, when you have time, come to me because I want to give you money. The bugger remember. <laughs> Isn't that right? Do you know that you have the power and the authority to choose what to forget and what you remember? It's kind of like this. Back then, back, you know, in my growing up days, we had this, we had a photo album. I know you younger people don't know what a photo album is. <laughs> It was like a blank book in which we took photos. We had to go to a store and get our film developed, get back the film, and we put it in our photo albums. Nowadays, these kids have iPhones, right? But nonetheless, when I, was, uh, ha when I had these photos, I would not put ugly photos of myself in my photo album. <laughs> If I had green stuff stuck in my teeth, or I'd chuck it. That, don't, oh, dude, that looks terrible. If I had a junk photo of a friend, I would say, oh, that's, yeah, oh, that's gross. That's junk. I only selected photos that make me look good, make my friends look good. I captured moments where we were having fun, where we were laughing. I never kept photos where my wife and I were angry and yelling at each other. But some of us, we do that. Instead of keeping or collecting and storing the good photos, we instead choose the negative photos. 
Oh, you remember when, when uh, I remember when you offended me. Oh, let's keep that photo. I remember when you said, when you did this to me, I'm going to keep that photo. No, God says, don't do that. You choose which photos you remember, good memories. You put it in there. All the bad, all the bad photos, chuck it. See, your eyes is the, is the lens of your camera in your mind. And you get to focus, you get to choose and focus your eyes on what you want to capture. Does it make sense? And so when you fill your minds with, with positive, with good things, then when you take a look to the museum and your photo album of your mind, all you remember are the good. You don't remember the bad. You don't remember the hurts. Are you guys getting this? You can choose the good times. You can choose the, the good things that, that happened in your past. Stop choosing to keep those wounded, the, the offenses in your photo album. Chuck it. Get on your iPhone. Delete. Trash. Swipe. Whatever you guys do, you young people do. Amen? The next is real critical. Number four, it's to forgive quickly. Some of us are not forgiving quick enough. Forgive quickly. While Jesus was on the cross and being crucified, he said something that I want us to remember. I want us to keep this scripture in our minds. I want us to, to capture it deep and ingrain it in our hearts. This scripture has saved me. Relationship has kept me from going crazy. It has kept me from allowing bitterness, the root of bitterness, to develop in my heart. This scripture. Then let's read it. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. If there was any scripture aside from God so loved the world, this is the other scripture that you need to commit to memory and to heart. It is, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus said this while he was being crucified, while he was on the cross. Many of us, we get offended. Somebody steps on our toes and we get bent out of shape. Jesus was being persecuted. He was being crucified, not only physically, but also at a soul level. That's why he sweat blood and water. The wound was going so deep. Why is that? Because most people don't get up in the morning purposely thinking, how can I wound somebody else? How can I hurt somebody else? These folks who were crucifying Jesus intentionally and with purpose wanting to hurt Jesus and in fact kill him. So if Jesus was on the cross while being crucified, while experiencing the pain, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. This is significant. And this is what, what this scripture is telling us, is that when you are going through stuff, when you are being wounded somehow, somebody says something bad to you, about you, somebody steps on your toes, while you are going through this, don't don't record all that is happening. No, you take the offensive. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. While you are on the cross, while you are being crucified, while you are being offended, while you are in that, going through that pain, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This has saved my heart from getting so polluted. And I thought it was so interesting because this one scripture is not recorded in Matthew, Mark, or John. The four Gospels in the New Testament is absent this scripture. They saw the, all the events, the crucifixion, they saw the cross, but only Luke recorded it. And I thought to myself, wow, that's interesting. Why would Matthew Mark and John not have this. And it dawned on me, Luke was a physician. Luke was a doctor. And as doctors, as physicians, we're, the ears are always in tune of healing, remedy. 
And so when Luke heard this, Father, forgive them. He got it. That's healing. That's a prescription of healing. I need to record this. Forgiveness is a prescription to your wound. So many folks are suffering from wounds that are unhealed because of unforgiveness. That unforgiveness has developed into bitterness. And that bitterness has resulted in resentment. Let me say that again. Unforgiveness, if not healed, the wound of unforgiveness because of, of offense, if not treated and healed through forgiveness, will eventually develop into bitterness. And if that is not addressed and healed, then it will metastasize. It'll grow into resentment. Resentment is, comes from two, re and sento. Re means again. Sento means feeling the cut again. When you are in resentment, I resent that. It is saying that you are feeling the pain of the offense of the cut over and over and over again. In other words, you are cutting yourself at the soul level over and over and over again. That's why unforgiveness has destroyed marriages. Unforgiveness has destroyed friendships. Unforgiveness has destroyed churches. Unforgiveness has destroyed ministries. And unforgiveness will destroy our country and our world. That's why Jesus on the cross, when he died, Father, forgive. That's healing. That's the remedy. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, wounds have a voice. And just like what's, what we're hearing in Texas, the shootings, that person who has done this unspeakable act, his act is his voice of a wound that was not healed. And he's taking it out on people. And we go, that's bad. That's evil. That's just bad. That's just evil. Don't we do that as well? When we shoot people with our cutting words, when we withhold forgiveness, when we choose to live in unforgiveness and live out of our wounds, we kind of like we do the same thing, only thing civilized. Only thing it's not broadcasted on national news. We tolerate broken relationships because of simply unforgiveness. Does it make sense? Unforgiveness is like, it's like getting stung by a bee. One time I was walking and something flew in my hair. It was a, like a thug, like poof. Like, ooh. Like, ooh, what is that? And see, in Hawaii, we had these things called bambucha flies. Bambucha flies were these, were these flies on steroids, okay? Like Hulk, right? Regular flies are like small. These bambucha ones are like flies on steroids. They're like the Incredible Hulk type flies. So when regular flies fly in your hair, you don't feel anything. Not this one. This one, poof, and I could feel it. And I thought, ooh, bambucha flies. So I thought, ooh, I won't catch this. I like see them. Like, you know, so I walk, walk, and I stop. Okay, I'm going to go, oh. And I caught it. I could feel it in my hand. I was like, whoa. So I was just about to open up my hand and see, I got stung. I threw it down and I noticed it was a bee. Yeah, a bee flew in my air, right? I got stung. I was like, ah. Right? And the first reaction is you want to get vengeance, right? So I'm like, ooh, you sucker, you even sting me. <laughs> yeah, take that. Yeah, look at you now. <laughs> right? But then as I was walking away, my hands started to throb. Just started to throb. I was like, wow, what is this? And I noticed that there was a stinger in the palm of my hand. And I could see it pulsating. <laughs> It was just pumping venom. With each pump of venom, I was feeling ping, 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 ping. You know what? After looking back at that event, I learned something. You know, we get stung by an offense. 
somebody says something unkind, insensitive, we get overlooked, we get abandoned, we go, ow! And we throw away the action, the person, and we want to kill the person. Look at you now, husband. Look at you now, wife. The relationship might be dead, but I still feel the pain. Isn't that right? What I needed to do was remove the stinger. Offense, the sting of death. We got to remove the stinger instead of killing the person. We don't have to kill the person. Remove the stinger. Now watch this. Some of you are bees right now. You're flying around. You go look. Oh, where my stinger went? You don't know that you, are just, you offended somebody. You don't know that you even hurt somebody. You didn't mean to. No bee wakes up going, I wonder who I can sting today. No. In life, we're going to do that. We're going to step on each other's toes. We're going to say something, right? We're going to sting somebody. And some of you are flying around, no more stinger. Can I encourage you? Be courageous. <laughs> be humble. If you recognize that the Holy Spirit brings it up, that you offended somebody, go and be courageous and ask for forgiveness. Ah, go me nasai. So sorry I said that. It stung you. Ah, so sorry, so sorry. Go me nasai. Please forgive me. And if you're the one that got stung, don't kill me. Just address the stinger. Forgive. Be courageous. Be humble. Why is that? Because forgiveness is a prayer that is, that is I, t- I, uh, I tell you, th- it is the most merciful. Forgiveness is a, is a prayer that is most merciful. And in fact, I want to share with you some, something I learned from this super wise dude, a mentor of mine, super spiritual, reminds me of me. Mr. Miyagi <laughs> said it this way. Person with no forgiveness in heart, living is worse punishment than death. Let me say that again. Daniel-san, person with no forgiveness in heart, living is worse punishment than death. Why is that? Because unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Yeah. Poison is like drinking poison. I mean, unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. So, folks, I want to I encourage you to, in your last bullet point, choose to live healed. Choose to live healed. Isaiah 53, 5 says this, By his scourging, we are healed. Past tense. By his stripes, we are healed. Too many of us are choosing to live wounded, are living out of our wounds, you might be thinking, what, is, what does that mean? Listen, if you have an anger problem, you have a wound. If you are short-tempered, you have a wound. If you have relational issues, there is a wound there that needs to be healed. If something is causing something right now, there is an unhealed wound that some of us have suppressed over a period of time have ignored for a period of time. Why? Because it's not a physical wound. It is a soul wound that is on the inside. It is deep on the inside. And in what happens is if you keep suppressing it, you keep covering it over, it's like, it's like when Adam hid himself with fig leaves, right? When you hide yourself, you hide from God. When you hide yourself, you hide from the physician. No, you have to surrender. You have to open up your heart. To allow the great physician to come in because he wants to heal everyone because God is saying to some of you, your anger is going to destroy your present and your future relationships. It's not you. It's your anger. How did you get that anger? From a past wound that was never healed properly. Are you guys getting this? From unforgiveness. Some of us, we need to go back and forgive somebody that offended us. Bible says that By his scourging, I am healed. You can choose to be healed, live healed, or you can choose to live hurt. Two choices. When you choose to live healed, you're saying, I choose to be a victor. 
When you choose to live hurt, you choose to live as a victim. God doesn't want you to, to live as a victim. He wants you to live as a victor. Why? Because you have victory in Jesus Christ. Why? Because you can have an awesome marriage. You can have an awesome family. You can have an awesome dream. You can have an abundance of, of his hope in, in, in the future. See, he doesn't want all of that to be forsaken. But he first, I need to wash you so that you can have part of me. Do you guys receive that? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 